Hi hey guys, my name is Dr. Bruno Subarau and I'm your AOC PM&R Fellowship Chair here once again to help make you who you really are, a PM&R Superstar. Case 3, a 74-year-old male admitted to your inpatient rehabilitation facility after suffering a stroke with left side and hemiplegia begins to complain of new onset left shoulder pain. Post-stroke shoulder pain is extremely common, which means it's extremely testable. Let's take a look at the differentials. The differential for post-stroke shoulder pain is broad, but these are must-know topics. And pay particular attention to CRPS type 1 and shoulder subluxation, as these are the most common etiologies in this patient population. So CRPS type 1 is actually short for complex regional pain syndrome type 1, but on the boards it may be written as reflex sympathetic dystrophy, but don't get confused. These two are one and the same. Taking a quick look back at our question now, we can see that the patient has not only burning pain and limitations of range of motion, but also allodynia and diffuse swelling, which points us in the direction of a diagnosis of complex regional pain syndrome in the acute phase. Taking a look at this slide, you can see that Stage one, the acute phase, usually begins within three months after the stroke has happened, and it involves burning, pain, allodynia, and vasomotor changes, including increased nail and hair growth. Stage two is deemed the dystrophic stage, and it involves more intense pain, some muscle atrophy, brittle nails, and mottled skin. Both stage one and stage two last typically between three and six months. The final stage, stage 3, is deemed the atrophic stage, where pain actually decreases and you get pallor and smooth, shiny skin. One term worth noting if you're really looking to ace that exam is sudex atrophy, which is patchy demineralization of the bones of the extremity. So the point of all this is not to get bogged down in the details. It's actually to remember some key important facts that's going to help you on test day. So let's take a look at some of these key facts. First key point to remember is that the triple phase bone scan is the most sensitive test for CRPS. Of course you're going to order an x-ray, but don't expect it to show anything in the acute phase. The second point to remember is that the Stelly ganglion block is the gold standard for diagnosis. Remember this disease is also called reflex sympathetic dystrophy, so if you block that sympathetic discharge, you're going to get resolution of your symptoms and thus confirm the diagnosis. And the last point to remember is that treatment involves early range of motion and desensitization techniques in addition to any medications you could offer, like steroids, for example. So to all my PM&R superstars out there, make me proud and answer this question. Now, if you answered Stelly Ganglion Block, then my work here is done. Guys, thank you for sticking with me through this difficult topic. One might even say it was complex. Anyhow, please don't forget to continue to study on the different causes of post-stroke shoulder pain as these are heavily tested topics. So we'll see you next time. I'm going to leave you with a question that we'll answer on the next episode. As always, visit us at www.aocpmnr.org. Subscribe to my videos and like us on Facebook. I'll see you next time, guys.